Hey internet, Eric here. Um, I'm here today with a review per request. Um, this is a request from a fellow for a, from a this is a review from a subscriber of mine. Um, they go by the name of ABZ Productions. So thank you for you know subscribing to my channel ABZ and interacting and actually giving a suggestion. And it is a review of Rocky V, but it is actually the um, producer's cut or the work print release or the director's cut, however you want to say it. Um, if you are uh, new to my channel, I have already defended Rocky V in my You Hate It, I Don't uh, categories, where I feel like I'm the minority of a, f um, of a fan of a film. And I defend it and try to say, try to convince people that it's not as bad as you think. Um, I already uh, so check that out in my uh, my categories. You know my playlist. I have it listed. But um, I don't know if you're male or female. But ABZ um, contacted me after seeing my defense of Rocky Five, and they asked me if I've ever seen the work print, which has never been released to my knowledge. I had to go to DailyMotion.com. And it is currently uploaded there in, I believe, six parts. Um, and they asked me to watch it and give my critique of it. Um, I'm going to do the best I can since I already um, basically reviewed this before. I'm going to go through the differences and tell you my preference. Um, so yes, Rocky Five, Director's Cut, Work Print Edition. Here we go. Um, I got some notes that I've taken down. And I'm just going to go step by step and give you my uh, my opinion. Um, if you want to know the plot to Rocky Five, go back and check my um, my previous video. There you go. Um, we have a new opening. Um, the new opening here is actually in color. And there's a lot of freeze framing. Like when Rocky gets punched, it freezes like that. When Rocky is thrown across the ring, it freezes like that. Um, and... I don't really care for it. I prefer the theatrical version. In the theatrical version, we have it um, going back and forth between black and white, or like a gray tone, and um, and color. And I love how, like when they're introducing the characters, they give the credits. Like let's just say when they want to introduce Talia Shire, who plays Adrian, she yell in the theatrical cut. She yells Rocky. But when she yells Rocky, it slows down and turns gray, and then shows Talia Shire right there on the screen. I think it's more impactful that way. Um, um, yeah, just, I don't really care for the way this started. I prefer the theatrical version. Um, like when Pauly, you know, Burt Young, he looks at Rocky and he says he's getting killed out there. He says the line... And it slows down when he's looking back at Rocky and it makes it more dramatic, turns, you know, that gray tone. Much, much better in the theatrical version. Um, the Rocky press conference is a little longer when he's announcing his retirement and everything that happened to him in Moscow when he was fighting Drago. I actually enjoy this more in the work print or the director's cut, what have you. Um, it's more family-oriented. It's um, Rocky saying he does this you know, he's doing what he's doing for his family, for his son, for his wife, you know, for their livelihood. And I really, really enjoyed that. I liked how it brought them, you know, it showed his love for his family. And he would, how much he would pretty much sacrifice his health for taking care of his family. So that was a plus. Um, after they lost their money, we see Rocky is in the attic, and he talks to Adrian, and then he decides he's going to go to the bar. And that's in the theatrical cut. In the work print, or director's cut, we actually see Rocky drunk at the bar. I'm about 50-50 here. Okay, Rocky is drunk off his ass, and Stallone is not very good, you know, being drunk, Rocky. Um, he's talking about how he fucked up making breakfast one day. And... The, and... Stallone's performance looks very forced. He's trying to be comedic, and it's it's just not working. It's not working here. Um, we have a lot of the drunk, the the bar uh, patrons heckling him, which is very good. 
making it dramatic, making Rocky very sympathetic. And then we get um, where he talks to, where Rocky talks to the bartender, and the bartender says it's basically sad uh, seeing you here, Rocky. Um, it's sad seeing you back where you first started. I wish you would, you know, get out of here. Excuse me. And then it cuts to you know, Rocky leaving, which is in the, which is in the um, theatrical cut. Like I said, I'm 50-50 here. I like seeing the patrons heckle Rocky. I like where the bartender tells him it's sad to see him there because it makes Rocky more sympathetic with everything he's going through. But drunk Rocky is just really bad. It's really, really forced. It's really unfunny. Even though Stallone is trying to make it comedic. And it just doesn't work. So I would prefer the theatrical version where he says he's going to go to the bar and then we cut to Rocky leaving the bar and he's fucking drunk. I would prefer that. Um, let's see. What else is different? Now, when Rocky's in the in Mickey's gym and he puts on the boxing glove and he's remembering everything that he's doing, slipping the jab, and then he remembers um, Mickey training him before his uh, initial fight with Apollo. And it's in color, which I don't, which I don't care for. Because I prefer, I like it when flashbacks are in black and white. Because it, it shows you how it's the past, you know. And Mickey's speech is actually different. Um, he, there's a scene, you know, he says in the theatrical cut, he says how Rocky is, he's trying to say how Rocky is his motivation. But you know how Mickey's this old punch drunk guy, and he in theatrical cut, he, instead of motivation, he says, you're like my motivization. You know, he stutters a little bit. He gets the words wrong. And I feel that's more natural. I like the way that Mickey says his speech wrong. I don't know. That's just my preference. Um, and then he gives Rocky the cufflink, and they walk away. Now, in the theatrical cut, Rocky asks Mickey... Rocky asks Mickey... What happened to the other cufflink? Because, you know, he gives him, you know, the little boxing glove cufflink. And then Mickey says, I don't know. He probably gave it to some bum. That's not even in the work print at all. That was another sweet moment between Rocky and Mickey that I wish was still there. So I'm glad they put it in a theatrical cut. So once again, theatrical cut gets the nod. Um, this I wish was in theatrical cut. There's this added scene here where Rocky is putting his son Rocky Jr. or Robert to bed. And Rob, I'll just call him Robert. Robert asks his dad, he asks Rocky, he asks him the real reason why he retired. Because Rocky retired due to brain damage, you know. And Robert asks him and Rocky does his best to convince Robert you know, that he retired for a good reason. And Robert is concerned that Rocky about Rocky's health. And Rocky does his best to convince his son not to be afraid. Um, that his health is perfectly fine. That he is okay. And it's a really good, sweet scene. And you can see Stallone start to tear up. Start to cry when he's talking to Robert. And I really wish they would have left that in. Because A, it shows how Stallone actually can act if he's given the right material. Um, I mentioned that in my Creed review. Um, check that out. Um, but yeah, Stallone can act if he's given the right stuff to work with. And I really wish it would have stayed in the theatrical cut. I understand it might have made the film more of a downer. Because this is a very sad movie in a lot of parts. So I, And they might have cut it for pacing or whatever. But I really wish this would have kept in. So you get the, you get the plus right there, work print. Um... There's a very sweet, after that sweet scene with Rocky and Adrian being intimate the first night home, um, you don't see any sex or any nudity, but Adrian's being very coy with Rocky, very sweet, very attempting to be seductive and loving with Rocky, and he falls for it, and then they, they kiss, and, you know, it, it fades to black. Um, doesn't really matter. I mean, it was sweet seeing it. It doesn't really help the story flow at all, but it still shows that, Adrian, even though she's now no longer in the mansion, she no longer has the riches, she still loves her husband very much. So I'm about 50-50. Not necessary, but it was cool to see. Now, let's see here. We get to a scene 
Well, this is an added scene. After Polly and Uncle Polly and Rocky meet uh, Tommy Gunn, they walk away. And Polly gets into an argument with a bunch of bums. And that's that's okay. But what I really like is we find Rocky finally meets little Marie. And if you remember Marie, Marie was a character in the original Rocky, okay? And eventually Rocky was trying to tell her to straighten up her life or else she'd basically end up like a hooker. Well, here in Rocky V, we see that Marie actually became a hooker, you know, living on the streets, trying to warm herself up with, you know, burning garbage cans, cold sores on her mouth. And it's a really cool callback to the first film. It's unnecessary. It doesn't do anything with the story. But it's really, really cool. I really enjoyed it because it was a good callback to the first one. And it shows how Rocky was right. How if Little Marie would have just listened to Rocky, um, she wouldn't be where she was. If she would have, you know... Um, it's once again Rocky trying to be the father figure. I mean, we do meet Marie again in um, Rocky Balboa. She's, she's never become a whore. They never mentioned that at all. But it, this was a cool scene. Um, I would give it a thumbs up. Um... Next, we have a different training montage. Um, I only say this is different because there's a couple added scenes. It doesn't really matter. It's the training montage of Rocky training Tommy Gunn and then Robert being trained to defend himself You know, from the schoolyard bullies. There's no music. There's no music at all, and that's my downside. I hate training montages with no music. Call me old-fashioned, but I want a training montage with no music, so thumb down, thumbs down there. Um, I don't care to hear that much dialogue. What the fuck is hanging from my hat? I don't fuck it. Anyways, sorry. Um, I prefer my training montages to be, you know, stereotypical with music. So, thumbs down here. Um, then we get another training montage with Tommy Gunn, and it's to the Rocky IV music. You know, the training montages in Rocky IV. Eh, no big deal. Now, finally, we're at the end. Because the rest of the film is pretty much the same. Finally, at the end, where Rocky and Tommy Gunn are getting into their their their, their brawl in the parking lot, and I'm only going to mention this. You see right here, big bold letters, Terry Funk exclamation points. This has nothing to do with the difference between the films. I just found out that you know Terry Funk, Wikipedia him, the the, the Hall of Fame wrestler, he helped choreograph this final fight. And it shows because how brutal it is, how, you know, up close and personal it is. Just had to give a shout out to Terry Funk. Now, here's some of the major, major differences. Now, when Rocky gets knocked down in the theatrical cut, he, he remembers, he remembers Mickey telling him, you know, the whole get up you son of a bitch because Mickey loves you speech. He remembers that and then that's what motivates him. To get up and beat the shit out of Tommy Gunn. Here, he actually has a vision where he sees Mickey's ghost. And Mickey's ghost is basically on an overpass. Yelling, basically yelling at him, get up you bum, blah blah blah, I didn't hear no bell. Um, intercut with some clips of Mr. T kicking the shit out of him, Mickey's death, and Ivan Drago. Don't like it. I. It's too unrealistic. Okay, Rocky... Rocky's story is based in reality. I don't need him seeing the ghostly vision of his former trainer telling him to get his ass up. I prefer him to see, you know, hear him. I prefer him to remember what's going on. So, sorry. Gotta say, theatrical cut is much better, much well done. Um, oh, um, I forgot to mention one difference. When Tommy and Rocky have their falling out on Christmas time, Tommy drives away. And Rocky has a headache. In the theatrical cut, it cuts to pretty much what you want to see is the blow from Ivan Drago that gave him his brain damage. They don't have that in the, um, what we call it, we're calling it the director's cut or work print cut. And I think it was more effective in um, theatrical cut. Um, the fight ends. Here's a major difference. The fight ends. And after Tommy is has his ass kicked, I like this difference. Rocky extends his hand out of respect to Tommy Gunn. Tommy Gunn actually takes it and shakes his hand. I really, really enjoyed that. 
Um, I understand why they would not put that in the theatrical cut because there's no way... If people are invested in Rocky Balboa here, they want Rocky to kick the shit out of Tommy Gunn and they want Tommy Gunn to just lay there like a punk. So I understand why they cut that. But I really, really enjoyed how Rocky still, after all this shit, he knows where Tommy Gunn's been. He knows what's happened to Tommy. He extends that hand. Tommy shakes his hand, realizes basically what's what's happened. And they finally leave respecting each other. So I prefer that. However... I don't like how in the work print or director's cut, Rocky doesn't knock out um, George Washington Duke, um, you know, Tommy Gunn's manager. He just basically walks away. We never see Duke at all. Duke doesn't say, God damn, I don't think. I don't remember. But Rocky does, you know, Rocky walks up to him in the theatrical cut, and George Washington Duke says, touch me and I'll sue. Rocky knocks the shit out of him, and then says, sue me for what? Sue me for what, basically, saying I don't have any fucking money for you to sue me for. Doesn't happen in the theatrical cut. That's one of my favorite... Theatrical cut. Doesn't happen in the work print. And that's one of my favorite scenes. I really enjoy that. How he, you know, basically saying, go ahead and sue me, motherfucker. I don't have anything for you to take from me. I really wish they would have, you know, that was in the, uh, the work print. But it's in a theatrical, so I'm happy. Finally, movie ends. Credits roll to the Rocky IV theme. I'm disappointed because they don't have Elton John's Measure of a Man song. Um, I absolutely love that song. That is my favorite Elton John song of all time. Not going to lie. I love how it's cut with Elton John's Measure of a Man to all the clips from Rocky 1 to Rocky 5. Perfect way to end what they thought was the closing chapter. It didn't happen here. Very disappointed. So overall, do I prefer... Theatrical over work print. Gotta go theatrical, you know. ABZ Productions, I don't know what you were hoping I would say. I don't know if you were just saying, you know, just asking to hear my opinion. Gotta say theatrical. Um, they cut out some unnecessary scenes. I wish they would have put in some, but overall, Rocky Five theatrical cut flows a lot better. Um... More engaging, um, like I said, that end, uh, the George Washington Duke getting knocked out. One of my favorite scenes here. Don't like the Mickey Ghost thing. Um, yeah. So overall, sorry, buddy, or you know, female buddy, ABZ Productions. Rocky Five theatrical cut is the way to go. So in the end, I want to say thank you. Uh, cheers. I want to say thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, tell your friends, tell, you know, Aunt Beth, whatever, whoever you want to tell, or don't subscribe. I don't care. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. Um, Rocky Five Theatrical Cut is the way to go over the work print. Just actually, if you want to watch the work print, just go to dailymotion.com, type in Rocky Five work print. It's there in six parts. You can watch it for yourself for totally free. And you know what? Why don't you go do that if you are watching this video and then tell me your opinion. I would love to hear your comments below. So, in the end, cheers. And once again, like Rocky says, go for it.